You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Falling Skies After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. Two five six seventeen twenty nine, and now another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Falling Skies After Show. Hey everybody, Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another episode of Falling Skies. This is season two, episode seven, Molan Lave. Oh my God, a huge episode. I am Tamara Berg. I am joined in studio by... Dario Kristen. Steve Bottomley. And Sophia Stanley. And we have Mr. Ben Bottomley as our engineer tonight. Ben Engineer. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Hey. So I was reading on the message boards before I watched the show today that this was an epic episode, and yeah. it was. I mean, we were so excited about last week's episode. Yeah, it was great. Partly because we had a guest here um, yeah. who... Did not I spill know. the beans. I and know. There was Man. So good Man. Curses. I just tweeted Brandon um, a few minutes ago telling him how amazing this episode was. Yeah. And I wish we could have would have known some of this so that we could talk to him about I it. Know. But he yeah. clearly had uh, information to protect. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we were saying in retrospect, yeah, of course. Well, he was talking about the other show he Series, had, yeah. you yeah. know, and how he's going to be traveling. And it's like. You know, well, you know, the producer is pretty accommodating. I'm not sure how much they're going to be used. You know, the whole time, no one. Are you kidding? Yeah. You're going to find out next week. I'm it's going to be an ugly, gruesome death. Oh. <laughs> he did not let us in on anything. Yeah, he was good. He didn't. But he did a good what, job with that. You know, what did we warn everybody? Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, Don't get attached. Don't get, don't attached. get attached. As soon uh -huh. as you see somebody getting the love interest, as soon as you see something like that, you know, we know this guy. We know how he likes to knock off these characters. Yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Okay, so let's get into our first topic, which is what happened in the basement. Man. So Anne and uh, uh, Lourdes, Lourdes went down to the basement. To they were looking for supplies. They, they were, were they were basically raiding supplies, right? Yeah. And got down there and. Uh, you know what? I got. I'm, I froze because did we say what the title was? Molan Lava? Yeah, oh yeah, we did. We oh, did, did, but we? we didn't talk about it. Should we talk? Do you want to talk about that first? Yeah, because you looked it up, right? Yeah. I did. Um, actually, it says. Let me pull up my notes here. Sorry about that. And I just want to yell, Sparta! <laughs> right. It's a, um, it actually means come and take them. So oh. it is a classical expression of defiance. So it's, you know, it. It means war, basically war. You know, declaring, war. declaring war. Declaring war. And it, it was used by King Leonidas. King so Leonidas, So for all of yes. you who are uh, Spartans or um, fans of Sparta, I think it's very relevant to what we saw unfold this episode. Yes. Right, kind of an uprising awesome. and, and a, a real bringing together of the team because we've got things to do, sort of. Exactly. And yep. at the end of the day, I think that the Spartans – fought to the death that was mm. what they were trained to do from birth right and you know and we'll touch upon it a little bit later but you know tom basically says we're gonna bleed you until we can't bleed you anymore right. so i think it shows that there is a family unit um that you know even matt going down and being a protector despite the fact that he's a child he was a spartan he was a soldier he, he was, was a, a resistance fighter um and everyone is acting accordingly right. even in these tough times that they have to fight for the good of the resistance and for the good of America and for the good of their unit yeah. and, and the future exactly the future mm. that's what it's all about that's what it's all about so we get down into the basement Lourdes and uh, Anne are there Matt goes with them because they need protection yeah. and as it turns out he was key and critical in protecting them <laughs> they're down there for a little while and uh I well mean pretty, you know pretty quickly go ahead well because of the explosion to get rid of the mech yes they get trapped was. down there right and uh, you know, and I'm watching. I'm going, okay, all right. So, right. You know, I was like, going, all right. So you're just gonna drag this. What? 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 Right. What? What could happen? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a, lot <laughs> a lot apparently could happen. <laughs> a lot can happen. So we discovered a new. Uh, well, first of all, Jamil gets found 
uh, terribly, terribly injured. Yes, we, they go down <sighs> and they find Jamil and he's beat up, what appears to be beat up. We don't really know why. Right. And then it's revealed that he has these new form of creatures that are popping out of his mouth that remind me Aww. of Alien, you know, yes. like the movie Alien. Yeah. You know, it's yes. like that kind of intense feel. Yeah. And I, I, it, I felt like it was like a hundred of those things that came out of his oh mouth. My now, God. we got a little glimpse of them before they started showing up. Right. They opened the door. Oh, I think we saw it with, ha did we see it with Hal first? Hal the first and time Maggie. Hal and Maggie. Yeah. Right. They shut, that was the yeah. pathway out. Yeah. So we were kind of like, oh, there's a new critter. But well, and they, didn't know they, they were there. Did you, s a quick question on this. Are they a, a totally new creature or are they skitter, baby skitters? Do we think? Does you know, that's that's a good question. They kind of have that, kind of have that look, look about them, yeah. right? I didn't know if it was just another weapon that they have in their arsenal mm. going like, you know, okay, throw the crawlies in because we're going to flush these guys out. I didn't yeah. know if it was... Whatever, they're nasty. Yeah, they're like an insane termite spider kind of thing because Raid's not when Ben that. when Ben was about to open that other compartment, they he heard the spiders behind the compartment and they had little holes mm -hmm. that he noticed right. in the compartment. So I mean, apparently they can eat through anything. Eat through metal, especially. Metal. Do you mean do you mean Matt or do you mean Ben? I'm sorry, I meant Matt. Matt. Okay. Yeah, Matt. Yeah. Yes, okay. Matt. So we then you realize that Jamal is essentially dead, but right. he's just right. holding on to warn the rest of them. Right as best he can because right. they start to open the door that's when he's screaming don't do it don't do it and then you know he and didn't make it but he before he did die he told Lourdes he loved her he yes did. as soon as he said that uh, all of his only went oh, oh. <laughs> he's <laughs> dead, <laughs> dead. <laughs> but he oh. also told them to run he, he did tell them to run, run. Yeah. he was waiting he was, it was like he was giving his last breath just to tell them that point so yeah I mean if you're gonna you have to die in the series that's that was a pretty good way to do it yeah that's it you was know, you got it was to be the hero dramatic. and yeah. you got to lay there well the dummy Jamil got to lay there yeah yeah. Wow, the vomiting the spiders though was really nasty and, and I think it also shows that I think they're starting to gel as a military unit in the same point that Tom didn't go down there to rescue him. The fact that Tom allowed someone else to go mm -hmm. and potentially rescue his son, that I think was a pivotal moment because it shows that he's learning how to take or orders, which then I think will play out later on in the episode. And work yeah. within the hierarchy exactly. of the military. Like and do yeah. what's for the, for the better of all and not just for his familial unit. Right. 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 Well, he was sent Jamil down. Um, I, didn't, I don't know if Tom knew that they were um, trapped. I think they were just trying to find out where they are. Oh, they went there. Go get them. Yeah. Because they were bringing everybody together. Yes. Yeah. He didn't appear to know. R right. Because yeah, he yeah. didn't realize his explosion had that Effect consequence. Effect on the consequence. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So but, but yeah, that, I, I noticed that too, though. That there is starting, they're, they're kind of, and, and he showed it again later. He did. W we can touch on that later, too, but yeah. Well, so then um, Lourdes and Anne decide that the only, that first of all, they, they understand that they need to seal off the, the doors and things to keep these the crawlies away yeah. uh, and decide that they need to send Matt to, to, to save them. Yeah. Um, you know, my question was, what makes them think that that air shaft was safe? <laughs> yeah, I think at that point, they were trying to get out of that location that they were in the basement. I think at, at any point, they were going to take any route yeah. possible to get out of that. I was feeling kind of sick to my stomach, though, for Anne, because she's she's a mother mm -hmm. yeah. her husband yeah she's mm -hmm. a mother you're still a mother if your child dies but she's a mother and and she's sending you know this baby yeah. effectively to go save them it should, well, I mean I knew it was I knew it was the only choice like we said but it was it was disturbing to to watch that and have them send Matt off and go really hope you can save us because if not it's going to be terrible death for you <laughs> no but it does go to Sophia's point about them starting to act like a military yes, unit. Yes, I agree you know, with even, that. Even, mm -hmm. you know, when you first see Matt, he's just holding the gun, and when uh, Jamil says, you know, why are we waiting, and he's like, no, they're coming back, and so he's starting to be a soldier. He is. And uh, Captain Weaver said, you know, get moving soldier and stuff, and so, you know, it. he knew, Matt knew, look, this is our only choice, and I'm the only guy that can do this. And also, it's interesting to see how in the last several weeks of the episodes, remember, I think maybe two weeks ago, Tom had the conversation with, with Matt about him not wanting him to have a gun. Yes. And now he's basically a fighter. You know, mm -hmm. he, he's, he's yeah. transformed into this young fighter who's playing a very prominent part in the entire second mass.
Mm-hmm. So it's it, you know it's interesting that that transition is actually taking place in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and and I think not to bring back the title of the show, but I think also too there's a birthright. The fact that they keep calling them Masons and that there mm. is obviously right. something important about that namesake, and that mm. despite the fact that Matt is so young, yeah, not only did he get in the tunnel knowing that potentially he could die, mm-hmm. knowing that he was their only potential you know rescue route, but he also calmed them down. And mm-hmm. even though he was the one going into danger, he assured them that not only would everything be all right, but that he would bring help. Yeah. And so I think that that, again, showed that he takes his role not only as a soldier very importantly or takes it very seriously, he also takes being a mason very seriously. And right. I think that's their role is to calm people down and assure that everything's going to be okay as long as we follow the course that we have laid out for ourselves. And I he's agree. developing his maturity and, and all. Holy I know I lost my notes. (laughs) (laughs) I never take notes, but I lost my notes. (laughs) His maturity is developing, and you know, even though he's a little boy, he's got to step up. So, did you you have something to say? You look like you had no, no, no. When you said, uh, you know, the Mason, and there's a couple of times in there where they said, "Don't you know, you're a Mason, you're a Mason." I I just realized that the country was founded by three Masons. Mm -hmm. Three Masons. So, uh, you know, again, I don't know if it was intentional, but I'm starting to see a lot more of the little things. And again, they they brought. Well, I'll touch on it later, but they they cleaned up a little bit of business from a previous episode that yes. we had a discussion off air about mm-hmm. so that'll be interesting mm-hmm. um hey so you know what when you guys are going to buy stuff online and you go to amazon you probably have a bookmark or a button on, on your browser, browser. Mm-hmm. right i do change it change it to afterbuzztv.com. that way you don't have to think about oh i got to go there you just hit the afterbuzz button right away and if you do that Amazon will help support AfterBuzz. We can give you... Then once you go to AfterBuzz, you click on the Amazon. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Amazon After you go to then banner. then click on the banner. It's right mm-hmm. there on the front page. You can't miss it. Um, Amazon will give AfterBuzz some extra, which means we can continue doing <laughs> this and make everybody happy. Yeah. And so it really helps browser. us out. Change yeah, it bookmark. really helps us yeah. out. It's not a big deal for you, but it is a big deal for us. So it is. <laughs> so please do it. Next, I want to talk about Karen and the Overlord. Mm. And, okay, first, one of the things that I noticed was very early on in this episode, Karen and Ben are talking about what it's like to be connected as she yeah. was. It. Yeah. That was creepy. That was it like was, sex. She was sex, having sex. Yeah. She was. I want Thank your you. sex, baby. <laughs> yeah, no, she was like really going, and that's where I was like, oh, wow, this is a very sensual thing that being connected is. It was. Yeah. Well, and Whoa. clearly, she's she's under the the uh, spell uh-huh. of that, and um, Ben not so much. No, Ben wasn't buying into it no. all that much. Oh, no, no. Um, there smart. there was something that caught me though. Yep. Uh, because you open up and Ben is saying, "I you know there's a a, a rebellion, mm-hmm. and right. we can go there and we'll be safe and everything." And so I'm figuring he's going to lead him right into the rebellion, and they pop up and they stop him. I'm like, oh, no, you stay where you are and just why are you stopping him? I, I understand it later. But again, right. it's one of those things where you go, y- you're, if you're, you're smart. You're a smart show yeah. and you've got people following this stuff and then suddenly go, no. So anyway, that kind of threw me a little bit. I, I, I know why they did it, but, you know. We know why they did it, but it still goes back to my point that I was saying last week that he is still an underutilized mm-hmm. component of the second ben. mass. Ben mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Ben is an underutilized component. They mm-hmm. should be using him for all the information that he knows. He clearly knows a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. And just that conversation that he did have with Karen, I mean, they should utilize him a lot more. I mean, he could, he could be putting him in such a better place than what they're at right now. So Yeah, they could have utilized, uh, they could have had a conversation about, you know, feeling like you're sp- caught between two worlds yeah. or, or we don't belong here we don't belong there you know there's a lot of stuff that if they're trying to show ben in this conflict this inner conflict yeah. it that's a story you have to hit a little bit more often i agree you know and but anyway so yeah so he got bushwhacked ambushed and the overlord gets tri- tries to bring um matt into matt and tom into the conversation or Ben rather and yeah. Tom he's threatening to he he puts the whammy on Ben yes, right yes in front of Tom yeah Oh yeah, later on after you, later on. Streamer from the back, yeah, I love shoot him. Shoot him. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean love because it. I mean at the end of the day, it's like the the overlords obviously have studied the humans, mm-hmm. right? And 
Tom knows this because Tom has been on the ship, yes. which we have talked about several times, has right. never mentioned what he learned on the ship. Right. So the ability to get inside people's head is only based on what they think you're going to do. They keep playing on again and again the fact that Tom is a father, and obviously he loves his son to the point where he went and he rescued him. Right. Mm -hmm. So take away that leverage. The weakness, So yeah. you either do one of two things. You shoot your kid. Bad Would idea. Not mm -hmm. going to happen. Or you shoot the overlord. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Mm -hmm. So when he shot him, I, I, I think I like threw my hands up like it was a yeah. touchdown. It was amazing. Yeah. Tick, tick, boom. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. And plus, well, you were screaming at him to do it for a while anyway. I, for a while. <laughs> I mean, because I, I was screaming also, too, because I think that there is a, there is an inherent weakness. This isn't Mortal Kombat. Like, this is actual real life where they are fighting for the survival of the entire yes. human species. Yes. And the fact that there was an overlord who showed himself in this scenario, they should be mindful. The fact that it's the overlord that was actually on the ship with Tom, and I can't remember in terms of the timing that at that time when he shot him, if he knew it was in fact the overlord that right. was on the ship. Yeah, yeah, he did. But for that alone, what do you really think you're going to learn from him? Let's really be well, real. This is a superior species. Do you think you're going to get anything out of him? Right. So if you can't get anything out of him, shoot him. Ex uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say I was very nervous about that scene, though, because my, my thought is if they shoot him, or before he shot him, if they shoot him, they're just the, the overlords are just going to come back at them even harder. Ha right. You know, I mean, we saw what they did to Boone, Boone the character Boone. Yes. They yes. shot him. I mean, I just felt like if Tom shoots him, they're going to come back so hard on them that it's going to be a crazy mess. I mean, I just didn't know if that was the smartest idea. At the, the time. He, that is their ticket out of there. The um, overlord, or fishhead as they're called. Fishhead. Fishhead. Right. Um, but some interesting conversation before he got shot. Yeah. Which was... Uh, yes. You're in... We're going to leave. That's new. You I know, agree. this is only... Uh, this is something that they're trying to figure out. He won't say why they're there yet. Right. But... Uh, and it's obviously not the first time they've done it. Right. And now Tom does have all this information. He does. And and again, I guess we're going to wait to see if he decides to share it. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you've got this information, like, hey, you know, he said that they're only here for a little while. You guys want to just hunker down and let them do their I thing know, and this leave? This is bu bugging me just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm, I mean, obviously they've got they've, the writers and the producers have an agenda here that we're right. not privy to. But sure. it's kind of bothering me that we know so much in uh, about what Tom has learned mm -hmm. and and that they're and not really nodding about. to it and and speaking about it. Right. Yeah, that that I'm a little bit wondering about too. Well, and I actually think it's deliberate. I think that Tom understands history. And that if you understand history and if someone gives you a potential out, right? We've talked about this before, mm -hmm. whether or not it's a reservation, whether or not it's some <laughs> safety place, but you're still theoretically enslaved. Mm -hmm. He knows that they may not fight as aggressively as if they know that their only option is either live and be free or to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Intellectually, and I'm going to get my democracy mixed up, mixed up, I think it's called a meritocracy, when only a few people are privy to certain information and they're making all the decisions. That's, in essence, what they're doing right now. They're right. in a military state. So in a military state, you don't let every – everyone yeah. cannot be right. aware of everything. But – and I see what you're saying. But mm -hmm. Tom isn't taking that information even over to Captain Weaver as far yeah. as we know, I which agree. I think would be a really fascinating – extra storyline yeah. yeah. of Tom and Captain Weaver know this and they are continually having to make a Back decision based on do we do you know which way do we go here and having that extra pressure put on them so uh, I'm with you it's like come on you're giving up a lot of information for the audience yeah. but in order to do that you have to give it to a character and the character you're giving it to everything I've seen about this guy would say I need to relay this information up the chain of command. That's mm -hmm. what I would think of I Tom. Agree. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. only going to hope that in the next couple of weeks we will find, you know, that he reveals more information, at least to Weaver, like your point saying. So. Now, they did have the Overlord trapped, and they were surrounded, and right. it was a standoff. Yeah. And may I say, the creepiest part of that is listening to Karen do the negotiations. Yes. Oh, yeah. In that cold, l the, first yeah. of all, it's a very nice voice, nice female, you know, it, it just like, doesn't have to be this way. As <laughs> that he's just. <laughs> oh, and that scene with Boone was rough. Oh man. Oh yeah. Well, I think you, you know what? I yelling. think I'll bet they toned it down a little bit just to get it into you know so that they didn't have to like have to. Although 
oh, they show some pretty good stuff here. I, you know, I think they really could have shown Boone suffering a little bit yeah. more and struggling and everything. But And you had a good point again. One of the reasons why we have to put it with captions is because Sophia's watching. <laughs> I know, because I, I'm screaming. I'm, I'm oh so God. excited. I'm so excited for the show, and I'm so excited for the emotion that it brings up because there are definitely moments when I'm watching the show that I actually forget I'm watching TV. Oh. And so, therefore, when when Boone was, was even showed himself and he started to walk forward, I screamed at the television, shoot him. Yeah. And I meant that someone from the resistance should shoot him. Yeah. Shoot Boone. Knew, yeah. Should shoot Boone. You knew what was going to happen. Right. And, there was no and ironically, that would have been quicker. And even though everyone would have been stunned, that would have been less emotionally damaging than to have to watch your friend, your comrade in arms, your member of the Berserkos, struggle and I agree with Steve that I think that for the purposes of editing for our own mm -hmm. emotional health mm -hmm. they toned it down yeah. but it, and they could have done it in a way that calls back to Captain Weaver's uh, discussion with Tom which is are you going to have the courage to pull the trigger if you exactly. have to right. now if yes. you saw that scene where Boone is struggling he's struggling you know and they're I gotta get him I gotta get him and then pop there's a there's a shot that takes him out and it turns around and it's just Tom standing there it's like you know we weren't, I'm not going to let him I'm not gonna let him suffer, you know. Exactly. The Weaver knows, but I'm not a writer on the thing. I don't know, you know. But you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. the storylines are there, and you can start connecting them. Maybe they will. I don't know. I was hoping though that Boom would at least like maybe go to the left or to the right when he was, you know. I knew I knew he didn't have a lot of energy, but I was hoping yeah. I was trying to give him a chance. Like, please let Boone at least maybe a bullet misses him, you know. Yeah. Maybe you can. I don't think so. Not with a Use a football move and go to the left, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then also too, <laughs> the old know. Boone football move. <laughs> Boom football move. <laughs> What you got? I, I have nothing. I okay. See, I guess I'm the exact opposite. I obviously watch too much Sparta and 300. Mm. There was a part of me that wished he had just turned around. Yeah, yeah, not just turned walked, around. Said, just turned around, not fought at not all. Not fought, and not, just, just literally because I think that, that emotionally, again, would have showed you, just like we said, the overlords obviously have done this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have. They stated that they could have just simply annihilated the planet. Right. And, and taken over. They didn't. So there's a reason that they need us. However, I think they've underestimated the strength of the human race. Mm -hmm. They have underestimated that regardless of whether or not they think they understand how we think, we're fighters by nature, number one. Number no, two, ahead. specifically as Americans, we're fighters. And we've fought and we've won when all the statistical odds were against us. So if, if he had simply turned and said, do what you will, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my spirit is something that you cannot break, that would have been extremely powerful, and I think that it would have showed something to the overlords, and at the same time, to his comrade in arms, that they cannot defeat us. Simply because they take our lives and we have lost soldiers and, and, and children along the way, we are resilient, and we will continue to fight, and we will not run from them. Yeah. Well, uh, that, can I, let me just yeah. jump in real quick. Uh, I agree. I, I think the reason why they didn't do it is because that sort of you know, I'm going to die a free man, mm -hmm. just structurally, Boone's character isn't big enough to be able yeah, to, agree with that. to carry that. Although I'll bet it comes, but I'll bet they're saving it for a bigger character. Pope. Somebody. Somebody's going to have to stand up and say, I'm, I'm not dying a slave. I'm dying a free man. That right. sort of thing. Right. But yeah, absolutely. And, and hopefully it's coming up at some point. I well, do have one quick question. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, okay. Cameron. Okay. Um, now that we have Jamil gone, who's going to take over the mechanics and, and engineering, the engineering portion? Is that going to be yeah. Pope's role? I don't know. I don't know. I guess maybe it would be because he, I, Pope and, and Jamil have similar backgrounds as far as being able to make certain things. So maybe, maybe that's who it is. Yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing. Um, but going back to the idea of what motivates Americans and like the you know the the basis of um, the spirit of the second mass, I think it's exactly what the overlord was saying was our weakness, is also our strength. Mm -hmm. You know, he was saying you're sentimental. Yeah. Yeah. You care yeah. about each other. And and that is that is the reason why we will die to protect each other. You know, and he's saying you all need a correction. And but but I I felt like it, it so was supporting exactly what you're saying that you know that that's the thing that makes us human. That is, it is the definition of humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Overlord is saying that 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 compassion will be your downfall because we are going to be mm -hmm. able to manipulate it. And mm -hmm. he gave an example by causing Ben to go into Dang. convulsion. When what they don't understand is that compassion is deeper and stronger than what you think. Right. Right. And that's. That is what they're discovering, and right. you know, and that, you know, you, it, it's not going to be an easy fight. Well, you know, speaking of overlords, we've talked about the overlords for several weeks now in all of our episodes. So, if anyone has missed any episodes, please go to iTunes.com. You can download any of the old 
podcast that we've put together and you can comment and rate us we love those because it helps us to build a better show for everyone we definitely read the comments we definitely want to know how you guys feel about this show and uh, you can also look at the or listen to the previous episodes and, and find out all about the overlords and in addition to that there's a new podcast application that lets you organize all of your selections better so please go to itunes.com rate and comment for us and we really appreciate you guys tuning in each week and, and tell a friend and tell a friend is that what you were say Jinx. <laughs> tell a friend tell a friend tell lots of friends <laughs> tell lots of friends the more that uh, iTunes sees uh, or the more th- yeah the more that iTunes sees the re- the, reviews, the ratings and, yeah. the, and the comments the more that other stations will say hey let's get these guys this guest and when that happens that means you out there get to ask them questions and we either through we us or through the chat room or however we do it so your voice gets to be heard so it is all connected like some atomic particles that Karen was talking about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, real quick. Let me jump on that real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had yeah, a discussion about, that. Yeah. about, okay, hold on. Let's do a right, right or break here and say, how did she know to put those bodies where she would be found? Under the get leaves. Under the leaves yeah. so that she would be brought in. Uh, I, I didn't want to bring it up when Jamil was here because it was his last week on Earth and I didn't think that would be fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> they answered it. They did answer. They it. answered it by her saying, you know, we, we, you break it down to subatomic level, and I knew exactly where to put these things, and she discovered there are bigger variables than what they anticipated. Yeah. With yep. And it speaks to that same leaking. thing. They think they know. They think they've got it all figured yeah. out, and then we outsmart them. Exactly. Because yep. that's what we do. Exactly. Yep. And I think that part of it has to do with we have to remember that Karen and and Ben were girlfriend and boyfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she was privy to a lot of information. But think about it. As a sibling, what do you normally do? You complain about your sibling, mm-hmm. right? You never talk to your friends about how much you love them and respect them and that you actually secretly envy them. So that's what she didn't count on. So regardless of the fact that, you know, uh, Hal had, had, you know, mixed feelings about who Ben was, whether or not he was stealing his girlfriend, he still was going to go tell his dad, and because they're a familial unit, they were going to come and get their son and or brother. Mm -hmm. And I think she didn't count on that. She thought she had everything figured out. Yeah. Yep. Right. It's sort of like the difference. Well, it's that it's that that classic conflict between the head and the heart. You know, they're they're coming more from the cerebral headspace, and you know, we're coming from what. Yeah. What matters to us. Right. So who's actually really smarter, the humans or the overlords? You know. We are. Of course, we are. (laughs) But of course they, we are. Yeah. Well, I think actually we're getting smarter because yeah. I think we're learning to do both. That our yeah. military, um, the military order is being restored, but at the same time, emotion is ruling. So I think that when, when, um, when Tom shot the overlord, he didn't just shoot him and let him die. Right. Right. Ooh. He just, he, yeah. He just shot wounded. him and then he went in and got Dr. Glass and Dr. Glass saved, you know, the overlord as much as possible. But then I think that was a pivotal, pivotal negotiating tactic when they said, now what are we going to do? What are we going to tell Karen? How are we going to get out of this? We need to delay them realizing and he said no let's tell them sooner rather than later and Mm -hmm. i think what he was saying was no we are equals we are no longer going to fight from the vantage point that we are victims this is our planet this is our country and we are literally gonna not figurative i mean not literally but we are literally gonna like figuratively look them eye to eye Mm -hmm. man to man and we're going to start attacking and making decisions from that vantage point Mm -hmm. yeah i agree that was really smart. Yeah. I mean, it was a smart move on their part. So Right. And, and that was, you know, one of the things that, that that was was where Weaver and Tom were coming together deciding that about how we're going to use Karen and how we're going to do it is kind of what we were talking about earlier about the, I, I like those interactions between Tom and Weaver. Yes. And because, well, because frankly, Tom's kind of been a, a little bit of a, an ancillary, ancillary, Ancillary. Ancil- ancillary, ancillary, thank you, character, the last few weeks. You know, it's been more about the about the kids, you know, Maggie and Ben and yeah. Jamil. And and I love watching that strategy because that we know that's his strength because he's the history professor. Right. And he's he's got, you know, the knowledge of, of the past. He's a smart guy. And I liked watching those interactions between him and Weaver. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to see more of that because that's, you know, and, and that the article that we talked about a couple weeks ago from the L.A. Times is teasing that that's going to be some of what we see coming up, and I'm and I'm looking forward to that. I, I hope that they go that direction. And Weaver's had a, a bad couple of weeks. I mean, he his daughter leaves. Indeed. He gets you know the skitter infection, and then now um, with Jamil, that's you know we even saw a tear tonight. You know, I don't yeah. even know if he shed a tear when his daughter left, but he he had a little tear in his eye this tonight. Tom? Uh, no, 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 Weaver. Oh, Weaver. Oh, Weaver. Weaver. I'm sorry. 
Got it. On well, episode. you know, again, I think he might have felt like he lost a family member, which probably brings us to our third topic. Our third topic, yeah. which is Tom, <laughs> Ben, family, Hal, all, Hal, all of it. You know, and Tom's sole job in this whole thing has to keep his family together. Right. Yeah. And he's gone to great lengths to keep his family together. Mm -hmm. And this was an episode <laughs> where they dispense with that a little bit. Yeah. You know, he went he went to great lengths to save Ben. Right. But at the end he just he had, had to let him go. Had to let him go at the same time that he had to let Matt become a soldier. Right? Letting him go in, mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, letting him go. The only one that really hasn't changed too much is Hal. This episode. He this probably episode. will next weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Or in two weeks. But, um, no, I thought, and, and they did a lot of interesting things within that. Y if you notice, um, Lorde, Lourdes? Lourdes. 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 She's completely lost her faith now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Just as Tom always had faith that no matter what, I can keep my family together, mm -hmm. her faith was always no matter what, there's something looking out for me right. or there's a better higher power whatever yeah. and they've both had to give that up yeah right well that was a nice parallel I'm sorry she she's had a rough time as well i mean she lost her family and and was it a couple weeks ago was it pope that told her that her aunt and uncle no no no, no the it pilot oh the pilot oh wait no, sorry no, no, no i it disagree was, it was um weaver's boyfriend Weavers, Weavers. Not Weavers, sorry. I was, like, I was like, wait a minute. I think Weaver's that's a different dead. show. I was <laughs> like, wait, where was that story line? No, I'm sorry. That's the <laughs> episode I saw. No, um, Weaver's daughter's boyfriend. Weaver's daughter's boyfriend. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. That's he right. revealed to her that her aunt and uncle were dead. Yeah, that she thought they were alive the whole time, which was keeping her motivated. And then tonight she loses Jamil. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I understand. I mean, how, yeah, how do you yeah. go on after that? You know, how do you take that? embrace that and then move forward you know i mean she was she's losing everybody well, yeah and it made me think about how you know back before medicine and technology was really part of our lives it was very common for i was talking to somebody recently about how people didn't announce that their babies were born until they were like eight weeks old hmm. because it was so common for babies to be oh, wow. to die yeah. hmm. you know in in the early months and and so you know people were just not as um I don't know, you know, connected and sentimental about certain things back 100 and 200 years ago because because life was so fragile and things could change so easily. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of, you know, of course, a po post apocalyptic. We're having that similar kind of scenario where you have to you have to be so much more in the moment. You really mm -hmm. have to. D appreciate what you have right now because you really don't know if it's going to be here tomorrow. And but for Lourdes, she really kind of turned it the other way and it just became defeat. She, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, instead of s you know sort of treasuring what we have, she's just going, "Look, we're all dying. It's just it's, it's just, just a matter, matter of time. It's just yep. a matter of time. It's going to happen to me, it's going to happen to you." Yeah. Uh so, yeah, that was uh, it, it, you know, in a way, I was kind of glad to see it. Because the Pollyanna stuff after a while, I was like, oh, come yeah. on. And we hadn't seen Take that side of her at all. So and yeah. it, it was a nice development for her. Yeah, it was and a nice And she turned it around at the end. I mean, she realized, like, listen, I know all this stuff is going on, but I, I kind of have to get it together because yeah. I do still need to help the people who, who are hurt. Yeah. Right. So. Right. But it was nice to see them give that character. Um, some depth. Some depth. Mm -hmm. And see that. But uh, so, yeah, Matt is now a soldier. Right. And he had to, Tom had to say goodbye to Ben. He did. Right. So Ben left last episode, yeah. came back in the beginning <laughs> of this episode, and then is leaving again in yeah. this episode because his decision is, I, I, I'm just not safe for you guys, right? Yeah. And that's such a double-edged sword. We've had this conversation a lot, and yeah. that's such a double-edged sword. Because he said, I know they're out there. How do you know that? It was a two-way street. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, dude, that's... That's the code breaker right there. You know, that's what the World War II, whatever that one was yeah. called, you know, it's just like, hold on to the that. talkers or but whatever. I, but yeah, I, but... Uh, but I think, though, that what what he said is the fact that not only was it a two-way street, but that he also could hear that there are several other children like him throughout the country. Yeah, and right. so I think that, again, being a Mason, he knows that he has a higher power. And I think that they all know that they have roles. And regardless of their emotional attachment to family, that's actually what's making him leave. And that yeah. there's a certain extent that I think that they're not going to believe him anyways. And, and the only way he potentially could show them is through action. He's tried to communicate to them. He's mm -hmm. tried to tell them that the red eye was good and there was mm -hmm. a rebellion going on amongst the skitters and no one believed him. So he feels his only role is to, s to protect his family is to go and find other like-minded kids 
go meet up with the skitter resistance movement and then potentially attack them from two fronts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have have that sort of additional um, weaponry, if you will. Exactly. With all those kids that have that two-way street. Yeah, I know, but again, I'm looking at them like going, yeah, but you've got a yeah. radio tuned to them, yeah. and you're going to say, nah, go ahead and throw it. You know, we don't really so. Uh, it, well, but you even that said same it tonight. Radio, you, you said it. You were like, "Why don't they get the information from him?" Yeah, yeah. but that same radio, he said, it's two ways, so they can keep finding him. So yeah, I I know, I see what he's doing, and I and I I agree with it. It's just I that, agree with it. Uh, you know, you've got so much, and it it was it was a good scene. Between Tom scene. and ben. yeah, between yeah. Tom and Ben, I thought they hit that just right. I I yeah, yeah. I think so too. And it was. This and the storytelling. I, no, Tamara, that, I apologize. That, no, that was what I was going to go to. Go ahead. Oh, no, you go, Tamara. No, please. no, go ahead. No, please. The <laughs> she can't because she was crying through the whole thing. Are you talking scene. about... Uh, <laughs> she doesn't remember any of it. She was, if she's not screaming at the seek screen, I totally she's agree. crying about this. It's the true. <laughs> so the preschool story, do you mean? Is that what you mean with it, that Tom was saying? Yeah, oh, God. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, that was. That was good. Sending you off to... And that's, well, you know, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking, man. I had to do it. Watching your kid go, yeah. sending I didn't him do off into the world. That one. No, we clearly just, he's never been to school, no. right? No. Well, and then back to your point. Occasionally, Tom's trying to hold so so hold on to his family so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crushing him to have Ben leave, but Ben has to do it. You know, I mean, you like, couldn't argue that point. That was the thing. Yeah, that was the one time where they kept saying, "You're not thinking. You're not. You know, you're not b thinking clearly. You're not." And that was the one point where he said, "No, well, yeah, actually, I do have to think clearly here. As much as it's killing me." You know, you're right, and, and it's more of that transformation of mm -hmm. becoming part of the unit, becoming the, the, unit. the everything's everything's more starting to fall into Including place. Including Ben becoming part of the more more of the unit by leaving it, you know, right? On the bigger it, sense, in the bigger sense. Again, mm -hmm. going to the, the thing about being a Mason and knowing that you're. May I just say real quick, badass of the show, and with the flamethrower. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's I'm action. sure when she saw that, she's like, oh, no, God, yes. This is going to be so sorry, Jamil. You got to what I get this. <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. That was great when they did that one. Yeah, Tom even acknowledged that with her. He's like, now, where did you get this flame yeah. from? <laughs> yeah, that was good. You just had it, you know, sitting down in the basement somewhere, Heidi. And again, talking about great scenes, that scene between Anne and Tom at the end was really, you know, sweet and tender and the closest mm -hmm. we're getting to normal, yeah. Yeah. you know, between in, in relationships and in this world. They've, they've had the few weeks sleeping on beds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. now, now we're gonna they're go back on the road. Now we're going to go to Charleston where they oh. have ice cream shops and roller Yeah, and <laughs> day spas. And what kind of strippers? Uh, what do you say? Strip clubs. Gingerbread. Gingerbread strippers. Gingerbread strippers. Strip, strip clubs <laughs> made of gingerbread. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, and I know a couple weeks ago I made a comment about the Anne and, and Tom relationship. I thought it was moving too fast. But, you know, I, I take it back. I actually am enjoying their relationship at this point because, you you need to have someone support you during this time period, you know, and yeah. I, I like how it's developing at this point. Well, uh, we didn't talk about the kiss between oh, Hal, Hal and, and Maggie, oh, and right? Maggie, yeah. Right? Um, uh, yeah. So I saw that and I'm thinking, OK, why? Yes. Why? And we know from talking to uh, Sarah uh, in studio, she's like, no, my character just needs to keep Hal as a leader. Yeah. Right. So I think that kiss was to get his mind off of. Karen, Karen. Yeah. and get right, back so to being a leader. It had nothing to do with her wanting to kiss him. Or uh, I it think had little a little, to little bit of that, <laughs> but I think, I think, you know, push comes to shove, she's going to say, you're a leader, and you can't be distracted with your thoughts. So it was me. a calculation, I kissing think so. him. And just in case anyone, yeah. And just in case anyone missed that episode, it was we had Sarah Carter in a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah. And she gave us a little insight that the relationship between mm -hmm. Hal and herself was going to develop even more than what mm -hmm. it had, and we saw it tonight. I mean, we she she put the Mac on him. You know, she pulled him to the side and gave mm -hmm. him a big kiss. Mm -hmm. A big juicy a one. Big juicy one. It was nice. Uh, what else have we got with the family, the brothers, the sad goodbye? I actually like the fact <laughs> that um, it seems that now that Karen is, her colors are revealed, Ben and Hal's relationship is getting a little bit closer, it seems. Um, th even tonight, they seem to be a little bit closer than what they have been in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's, that one, it's, that's <coughs> one of those ones that changes back and forth it each does time, change, you know, yeah. because there's, there's the lack of trust and then there's the needing each other <coughs> and... And all of that going on. You okay yeah. there, champ? There's a cough that's okay. just been killing me. I'm okay. sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, <coughs> are we going to go to commercial or are we skipping commercial now? Just want to go to news and gossip. You guys have some good news, news and gossip, right? Yeah, let's go to news then. Okay. After Buzz. After Buzz TV News.
Uh, you got a little something. I got a little something. I saw that um, TNT Newsroom reported that the average viewers for <coughs> Falling Skies is 5.9 million viewers. The series rank um, is the basic, the basic cable channel's number one summer drama yeah. for adults 18 <coughs> to 49. And we, we revealed last week, of course, that they got picked up for season three, which we're excited about. They're going to start <coughs> shooting uh, 10 episodes very soon, and it's going to air back in 2013. Um, also, congratulations to the cast because they were nominated for an Emmy. Mm -hmm. so for visual effects, for, for which video. is, I mean, was so on point with this episode with those little spider creepy crawly things that are still itching a little bit. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about was the difference between season one and season two. The budget went up, yeah. and I think that's directly correlating with the Emmy nomination. The other um, shows that are nominated in that category are Game of Thrones. A BBC show called Inside the Human Body, mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time, Pan Am, and The Walking Dead. Uh -huh. oh. How about that? Great show. So Good company. Yeah. Good company. And the Emmys are <laughs> in September. Does so anybody know the date? I can't remember. I don't um, know the exact date, but I know they're in September. September. Yeah. Um, I also was reading about executive producer Remy Abushan talking at Comic-Con about the show. And he was saying that we don't get to learn any more about the world and the alien's purpose on our planet except through the eyes of the second mass. We'll learn more, but not everything. And we will continue to learn more, hopefully, through the third season. So that comment that we've been making that we need to know the rules a little better, we're mm -hmm. just not going to get it. <laughs> That's well, what it sounds like, you, you know. know? Um, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, it's a as far as the writing and as far as, like, you know, finding the little things there's not that many you know it's a very very smart show yes so indeed. and you know a lot of times they a few episodes in they go oh no here's the fix right right so uh okay just enjoy, live with that. En enjoy it yeah. exactly um this is lean back entertainment this is not lean forward <laughs> entertainment. no you're right Thank that, you. is. that is i can speak again one other, we're glad you're back. <laughs> we're glad you're back. <laughs> One other just quote I saw from Noah Wiley. Uh, I believe this was also from Comic Con. I'm not sure about that. He says, We're filming the show about people who have lost everything that they have used to define themselves up to this point. They don't have homes, they don't have jobs, they don't have their families. And, and he said, at a lot of po a lot of people in this country are facing this same situation and that reality. So it's an interesting parallel to that is interesting. why, because he was talking about why are people connecting mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. Falling Skies where they didn't connect to some other science fiction shows. Right. And his his point was basically that um, it's not really science fiction in so a way. It does make you wonder uh, who the Skitters and the Overlords are representing. Mm, I'm sure we can have an off-camera debate about that. I'm sure we will. <laughs> or on Twitter later yeah. if you guys want to join in. Or if you want right to leave your ideas at iTunes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. We will read it. We also get uh, emails at oh, yeah. info at AfterBuzzTV.com. So sure. you you there Any are many ways. ways you can find us. Oh, also okay. there's comments underneath the YouTube videos. There are. Oh, yeah. You just ta I yeah. just realized that this yeah. week. So there you go. Uh, let's talk about predictions, shall we? Well, you oh, know, I'm sorry. Oh. Do you have one more? I have one more thing after the prediction I'm music. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I was just thinking that we should probably mention that next week, if you've missed any episodes oh of Falling yeah. Skies, they are doing an all-day marathon. That's, That's July right. Sunday, July 29th. So definitely check that out if there's anything you've missed. And no new episode th next week, the following Correct. week. Correct. It's two next weeks right. from today yeah. when so the new episode will not be will here next week. No, we won't. Okay. We will not be here, unfortunately. No. I'll make a note. Ooh, predictions, go. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost that. Okay, predictions. Who's got one? Oh, uh, I'll go first. Yay. Um Ben. Ben, prediction on Ben. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, do you think, I think maybe he, uh, he's going to go by way of Pope for a little while. And we may not see too much of Ben. Hmm. Yeah. I you mean, know? he was gone uh, early in the, uh, sort of gone. I, I was actually watching episode one and two of season one today, just because. And, uh, and he was not really present because he was harnessed and kind of went away. And so yeah. that, that could be the case again. And he'll and come back with a bang. I've not seen anybody else kind of pop up as far as storyline where they mm -hmm. go, oh, you know, we're setting them up. We're setting them up. Mm -hmm. uh, we said as soon as Jamil got a love interest, you better be careful in yeah. this. And he already knew. I think that was really funny. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, Ben may be off the chart just for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Sophia, prediction? Um, my prediction is we have eight, nine, and ten left. Right. So they're on their way to Charleston. I think, as Steve said, I think Charleston does not exist. It is set up by the aliens, and I think that Ben will come and rescue them. He'll mm. be the second wing coming in oh, to save them. So excellent. that's why he had to leave at the time that's period. That's cool. So he's going to come in, you know, round everyone up, and that's going to be the big standoff. Do you think that's going to be the finale? The 
Yeah. With the rebellion? Yeah. yeah. So it yeah. will be the Skitter Rebellion, and then it will also – and at the same time, it will show whoever's at Charleston – that's to me then is going to have to be the mutiny where there's going to be part oh, yes. of the humans who are going to say, no, we're not going to fight. And right. then there are those who are going to say, we're going to fight. And those ones that are going to fight are going to link with the skitters yeah. rebellion. Yep. And mm-hmm. yep. that's my prediction. I'm not going to fight with the skitters. That's going to be gonna big. Yeah, that's exactly. Gonna be big. I think you're, I think you're dead on. What do you have? Hmm. I'm going to go left again. I think that Hal is going to shoot and kill Karen. Oh, Oh, that's a good one. That's with great think. prejudice. Possibly. Extreme prejudice. <laughs> Extreme prejudice. <laughs> and anger. Oh, don't you think it'd be awesome if she's like walking down the street and just like she keeps pot shots like they did to Boone? D- right, exactly. <laughs> Parallel be Boone's, Boone's right. scene. I always go last on predictions because you guys are so good that I never, <laughs> <laughs> I never have to come up with one. <laughs> Your predicts um, we're not going to be here next But what week. I would like to <laughs> right. do is is start to see more of that Professor Tom Mason information come in. That's, yeah. that's what I would like to have happen and get some more of that like strategy and and military, you know, workings going on. I think that would be really interesting to see. I like that. Where can we find you? Uh, at Daryl Christon, D-E-R-R-I-A-L-C-H-R-I-S-T-O-N, and the same name on Facebook. You miss? Hey, Resistance Fighters, you can find me at Sophia Stanley, S-O-F-I-A, Stanley on Twitter. Steve? Bottomly Steve N on Twitter. Yeah, and at Tamara Berg on Twitter. Also, my website is TamaraCentral.com. Please join us in two weeks for the next new episode of Falling Skies, and we will see you then. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.